thought that you would be ideal in this guest because in this slot because you very very bravely uh, when you were serving cop up in Manchester you saw what was going on in Rochdale the grooming gang scandal and you saw uh, senior cops turning a blind eye to that you saw uh, your colleagues not perhaps investigating that scandal robustly enough and in the end you felt you had to speak up you had to turn whistleblower uh, which effectively uh, stalled your career. Uh, in the end, you had to leave the police force. Uh, but uh, this is what w you, w you were worried about, wasn't it, at the time? It was uh, the thing that we're talking about now, toxic cop culture. It is a thing, isn't it? Yeah, 100 uh, percent, Kevin. Um, this is exactly what I've been talking about for the past 10 years, but probably for 25 years since I joined the police, because even joining I was aware that, you know, the Greater Manchester Police in many respects were stuck in the dark ages, that they were living in the past. And this case, I think, has put the spotlight clearly on some of those failures. And tragic though this death of this young woman is, it actually, what I'm concerned about is that this case will become the focus of the attention when the actual problem goes far far deeper than this case, it goes right to the heart of policing and public trust, which um, has been lost from policing. And, you know, I've just heard Cressida Dick, you just played her interview today about an inquiry looking at the Met. Mm. Um, this problem, Kevin, is not just the Met. Yes. It's policing throughout mm. the whole country. You know, I worked in Greater Manchester Police and I am still heavily involved with um, some of the, the Rochdale victims, but also because I started my own charity, the Maggie Oliver Foundation. So every single day we speak to victims and survivors who are being failed today by forces throughout the country. So, you know, the spotlight is on this case but we need violence against women and girls to be lifted to be a priority. We need proper resources. Mm. This what, what, actually... Maggie, let me ask you this. Uh, yeah. You've spoken uh, very eloquently uh, when you joined the police force. Uh, you joined at a relatively late age, so you were no sort of young, shrinking violet. You were a woman of the world <laughs> at that point, and you were sh you've said in the past that you were shocked uh, by the Victorian attitudes to women that you saw within the police force. Uh, when you bravely became a whistleblower, uh, you must have felt uh, very, very isolated from that cop culture because that's part and parcel of this toxic cop culture that we're talking about, isn't it? That you don't rat on each other. And so I would suggest that the problem, well, one of the many problems with Wayne Cousins was that a series of fellow officers didn't feel uh, that uh, they wanted to spoil his career. Uh, did you fit, you must have felt the full force of that, that cop culture when you decided to speak out against it. Yeah, massively, um, massively. Um, it was a very, very lonely journey. Um, ne it nearly destroyed me um, because I had to put myself in a place where many of my colleagues were aware of what was going on, um, but were, you know, ultimately my, my decision to resign cost me my career. Um, and so to speak, out, it, if, if it had perhaps been a theft from motor vehicle, I might have just not made a big deal of it. But I had seen this going on over, you know, seven or eight years. I'd seen it in, in the Manchester and the Augusta case. I saw it in the Rochdale case. Um, interestingly, Kevin, um, you know, this case, we have here a girl who is a beautiful young woman. She's educated. She's from a good family. Her mother's very eloquent. And suddenly the, 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 the police and the public are behind it, a bit like the Yorkshire Ripper case in a way with Peter Sutcliffe and we had Jennifer Hill, if you remember, who was the first decent, if you like, in inverted commas, victim who had been murdered. Mm. You know, I've seen hundreds of, of victims of abuse and women being um, raped and um, violently assaulted um, who have been written off and ignored because they don't fit into the victim 
um, yeah, picture. Yeah, that, that, the sort of, oh, you know, they only had themselves to blame. Oh, look at look yeah. at the lifestyle, look at the way yeah. they were living, uh, which is no yeah. excuse whatsoever. A rape victim is a rape victim is a rape victim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No other considerations should be brought into play, uh, but I think that's what happened, certainly in Rochdale, as you well yeah. know. They basically yeah. decided that these young white girls who were being uh, preyed upon by the grooming gangs, uh, you know, that they were, you know, they yeah. came from broken homes they drank too yeah. much they took drugs it's their fault this is what yeah. has to be stamped out i think in the police force the end of that attitude let me explain to you maggie why as a citizen of this country and i know i'm not alone i'm kind of furious about what's going on in the met and crested a dick yeah. i don't me particularly too. have anything against crested a dick it's just that uh, she is the top dog in the police force and has been now for some years so today she announces this big independent inquiry and it's she said we need to look at uh, cop cult toxic cop culture we need to look at attitudes to women we need to look at the way we investigate women going missing and so on and so forth in other words saying all these areas are terribly terribly wrong and we need an inquiry to sort out now all these areas are terribly wrong uh, and they've gone terribly wrong under her watch she was the boss yeah. when all this happened. How can we be expected to trust the police if the woman who let it all go to pot is going to keep the top job? You, you know, you've, you've hit the nail on the head, Kevin, because Cressida Dick is just, um, she is an example of what is going on in many police forces. You know, she is trying to uh, protect the organisation, cover up the truth. Um, my, my experience leads me to, to know that to get to that rank in the police, you have got to, you, you come to a point where you have to choose between your own conscience and what is in the best interest of the organisation. And what is driving this review is an acceptance and, and actually a very clear message that the public have had enough, that the public no longer trusts the police. So they've been pushed into a corner. Um, but Cressida Dick really um, is, you know, she, she could go, people are calling for her to, to resign. But the problem is that the person who would replace her would have been through the same system that she has. I think we need a, a report like the McPherson report um, or a, a Royal Commission looking at policing, at the whole criminal justice system, at the courts, at the CPS, at why rape um, has become decriminalised, why only 1.6% of reported rapes actually ever get to court. Mm -hmm. And that is reported rapes. At the foundation, we have had 60% of our... Um, survivors who contacted us over the last three months who have said that they have been let down by the police. This is throughout the country. Mm -hmm. So it's a much bigger problem than Cressida Dick looking at this case and making a scapegoat mm -hmm. of individual police officers. Yeah. And you're going to get bad apples. Yeah. This is a yeah, system. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, I get that. You know, this is a system that is broken and patching it up around the edges will not solve the problem. I've got one uh, thought. I don't know what you think, Maggie. Now, it, when you, uh, as I say, courageously decided to speak out about the Rochdale grooming gang scandal uh, and effectively ended your own career uh, very bravely. Uh, I think it would have been better for you if the people you complained to uh, were a completely independent organisation. Nothing to do with the police, but an organisation that investigates the police. Yeah. So if I have a complaint about an officer, you had a complaint about a number of officers, uh, you don't go to the police and say, could you mark your own homework, please? Uh, you go to an independent authority that investigates the police completely without fear or favour. Because what's happening with uh, Mag uh, uh, Wayne Cousins, I think there's something like 12 officers were supposed to investigate him. Uh, they, are, they are all now being investigating uh, investigated themselves for not probing Wayne Cousins uh, robustly enough and we know why fellow copper don't rat on your mates we need an independent investigation yeah. authority would you agree 100% agree Kevin 150% and you know I'm still involved with the Rochdale case I am supporting um, three of the girls we, we've got an action against Greater Manchester Police and against the CPS for human, on human rights grounds. The police have blocked that at every, every avenue. The IOPC are involved. That's another organization that you know investigates the police. They're mostly retired police officers. They go to the police, to every police force and say, we're looking at this and this and that. 
the, the police force they're investigating gets a box together and says, there you are, have a look in that box. They don't give them the things that they don't want them to see. So it's a corrupt system that will never, um, un it will never display the real failures in there because they, their main aim is to protect the organization. And when I was involved uh, on my own, Kevin, mm. I went to my federation and they turned their back because ultimately, they are yeah. about damage limitation for the force. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Cressida Dick, uh, she, you know, when she says, "Oh, well, I'm going to sort this out," I mean, she's shown no uh, ability to sort things out in the past. And all I ever hear from coppers is, "Oh, well, the thing about Cressida is she really cares about her coppers." Good, good, feather in her clap. I'm glad she cares about her coppers. I think what we in the public worry about, yeah, maybe she cares about her coppers, but does she care about us? the people she's supposed to be protecting. Uh, I have my doubts. Uh, Maggie, uh, what a pleasure to talk to you again. Thank you so much for your time. Maggie Oliver there, former detective uh, at the Greater Manchester Police, who, uh, of course, uh, famously uh, became a whistleblower and uh, revealed the shocking Rochdale grooming gang scandal.